Several weeks back, Rocco from Linux Spotlight interviewed me, and that interview was released this morning. It's been really neat for me to see the number of viewers who, well, I guess viewers of Rocco's show, Linux Spotlight, who have expressed that, uh, that they've been watching Category 5 Technology TV since the very early days. Kevin Y. Currents, for example, says that he's been watching the show since then. Uh, Peter 14 uh, even predates the show, having uh, watched some of my very early YouTube videos. He said on Twitter, I got into Linux, thanks to Robbie, back in 2004 with Lindos when his show was live from his living room. A great person at heart who has helped so many around the world. Thank you so much. Jill Bryant Rineker says, uh, and I should mention, she's actually one of the co-hosts on Linux Gamecast, uh, LWDW. She says, uh, I have been watching Robbie's great Linux content for years, and I'm so looking forward to watching the Linux Spotlight. Tony Hughes says on Twitter, really pleased about this. Robbie was an inspiration and fantastic help to me as a noob. Cheers. As Nick says, uh, as Nick's says, great interview. I have followed Robbie's Cat5 TV for several years and it's always good. Thank you so much. And Joe Panico says, I really like what Robbie has done with his tech platforms. Because of these fabulous interviews, we get a glimpse into the lives of the people we have come to know at some level. The full interview is about an hour and a half long. Uh, don't watch it now. You can watch this show first and then we'll tune into the interview, but I'll show you a clip in just a moment. So um, in the course of the hour and a half interview, we get into a ton of topics, both personal and behind the scenes here at Category 5 TV. Uh, everything from open source, uh, my early days in Linux, my very first computer, and uh, the value of buying no name margarine. It'll all make sense a little later. <laughs> Here's that short sample from the interview for you. Welcome to the Linux Spotlight. This show is dedicated to showing off the best thing about Linux, our community. This community is made up of developers, distro maintainers, YouTubers, and everyday users. Each one plays a vital role in our community. And the goal is to have a discussion with each individual about their journey into Linux and beyond. So join me now as we turn the spotlight on. I'm your host, Rocco, and with me today, our special guest is Robbie Ferguson. Hey, Robbie, Rocco. how are you? Hey, doing great. You? I am doing excellent, dude. These days when I say I'm doing great, you got to give the air quotes. Yeah. Doing well, great. Hanging in. You're doing, doing the, the best, best that can. you can. That's it. Yep. Well, I think that's what we're all doing right now. So, Yes, sir. Yep. Um, you have shows like Technology TV and Newsroom. They cover all of technology, not just Linux. Uh, people will know you from that. But if you were to meet somebody that didn't know you, what would you say to them if they said, who's Robbie Ferguson personally? Who am I? I, I guess, um, you know, I'm a family guy. I'm a, uh, I, I have a, a wife and three kids at home. And uh, we have a great time together. And, and I love spending time with them. We love, like we do our nature hikes as often as we can and we're just finally getting to that point now where we can do that the weather is nice enough here in ontario canada um that uh, we've been doing that every weekend so I, I like family time i like doing things with with my kids and and helping well having them involved in my hobbies so that could be like having my son do maker tech with me um connecting right. GPIO on a Raspberry Pi to some circuit that I'm about to blow up, you know, that kind of stuff. So we try to do things together. Teaching them right. Learning, learning and bringing them along for the ride. So, you know, cause I'm always on a quest to learn. I'm, I'm never, I'm never happy with like, I'm never at that point where I'm done. 
I, yeah. I know all there is to know. I, I don't need to learn more. I'm ca- if I get to the point where, okay, I know enough about one topic, I'm moving on to something else. So I, I like to bring them with me. Right. Well, let's go down his, uh, history lane and go back to the beginning of your computers. What was the first computer that you used? The, the, what I would attribute, what I would say is the first computer that I ever sat down and, and coded on would have been the VIC-20. Uh, and I used that thing like crazy. Like I, I got to the point where I was writing code at, you know, five, six years old, um, which incidentally, you know, I always thought, oh, that's crazy. Like coding at six years old. And, and my sons have done the same. Um, and, you know, my nine-year-old now our youngest is uh, is coding in roblox and it and it's it, so that throws me back to those days and and uh i i really like that time where computers we understood how they worked we understood the in, inner workings of them so taking apart the commodore vic 20 was something that i i was familiar with but but the first real computer like pc would have been an xt which as funny as it is this big old IBM system that like is a boat anchor, as we say, um, I wasn't allowed to have a computer. So it was under blankets hidden in my closet. Like that, that's the kind of nerd I am that as a child, I hid an XT computer in my closet so that my dad wouldn't find it and get me in trouble. I don't, I, I can't even imagine what I did with the monitor. I, I don't know how I, figured out how to hide a did CRT ever, monitor. Did he ever find it? <laughs> I, I can't imagine he didn't, but he never mentioned it. So <laughs> I think he probably, he must have known, but my naive, stupid kid mind <laughs> thinks right. that, oh, the, dad doesn't know. And it's like this massive computer. <laughs> now, how long is it before you make the switch to Linux? Um, well, Lindos, Lindos was a complete switch. Yeah. Complete switch right from there. Yeah. Um. I used uh, an early version of Adobe Photoshop in Wine because the old version ran fine under under Wine. So, and then as soon as like CS2 came out, it was no longer, it wasn't working quite what quite right. So, because back then GIMP was really bad, um, but they've since fixed that with 2.10. So, um, like scaling is is a lot better now. But um, yeah, Lindos was about the time when I switched. I mean, I, I'm, na- I'm not name dropping. It was, it was a classic distro. They got sued by Microsoft for, for the name. <laughs> they had to change it to Linspire, which made no <laughs> sense. And then they, and in typical Michael Robertson style, he just fired everybody and sold the company and all the creative rights and everything. And now it's owned by somebody else. But so, yeah. but that got me to love Debian. Debian got me to love Ubuntu. Ubuntu got me to love. Mark Shuttleworth and yep. <laughs> the whole the whole ecosystem of uh, realizing that you can run a business based on support rather than product. Um, I think that that was kind of a, a revelation for me too. So so it's it's it, like everybody like you kind of move along with the waves and find where you're at. Right now, I run Linux Mint nineteen. Like it's that's I'm old school, so I like the Mate interface. Well, I was going to ask you, so why do you, you've tried all of them. So why did you stick with Linux Mint? I've uh, been with it since 19 was released. And that's mainly because <laughs> it was, it just is a brilliant out of the box experience. I didn't, I, I kind of, I fell out of love with Ubuntu for a little while because of uh, Unity. Unity made me fall out of love with Ubuntu. You weren't a fan. Definitely not. No. Um, and I very much am a little old school in my desktop paradigm. So I say I, I prefer Mate. I really do. Um, I really do like that interface. Like that's where I'm comfortable. So um, Linux Mint with Mate is a fantastic distro out of the box. Everything works. Um, and uh, they still support Compass. Which brings me all kinds of nerd joy. (laughs) Well, um, you know, not to sway you or anything, not to tempt you to (laughs) distro hop, but have you tried Ubuntu Mate and compared it to Linux Mint Mate? Yeah, Uh, what Martin and and Popey are doing is fantastic work. Um, 
And, and I have run that on some of my lower end systems and I love it. I've had it on laptops and stuff. Nothing. My choice to use Linux Mint right now is not to say that Ubuntu Mate is not brilliant. It really is. Um, but this is just where I've landed. <laughs> there you go. When, when you know how things work under the hood, a lot of stuff is very similar. So it's really just finding a stable distro that works out of the box. that doesn't waste a lot of your time setting it up. Um, because I use uh, um, Linux Mint at, uh, at work. I, I need something that I can like reinstall in, and be up and running in an hour and you know, back in business kind of thing. So it's worked. Not that I couldn't do that with Ubuntu Mate. It's just where you are. It's just where I'm at. Yeah. And I think that makes it really confusing too for, for new Linux users because, well, which, which flavor should I go with? Which distro? Why Ubuntu Mate versus Linux Mint with Mate? It's really, they're all very, very similar. So it's community. It's the ecosystem of the distro itself. It's, you know, where, where's the support that, you know, I don't need support. So I'm not really caring about that so much, but a novice user would. So, yep. You can watch the full interview on Linux Spotlight at cat5.tv slash spotlight. Thank you.